Hello everyone, welcome to the 10th video to beginner's guide on how to Revit. In this video, we will create section views, but first, let me explain what it does. Simply put, section views display a frontal representation in intersecting views. This button right here is the section view button. So, just gotta click it. And let's place it somewhere. Oh, let's hide our cat link first. Now, again here. In this interface, you will see some broken lines like this right here. This is the section view range. Starting from where it's facing, which is here. But in Revit, this is called far clip offset, which you can see here in extent, this one. This is the range that we can control. Now, again, we can also control it by dragging these broken lines here or in the properties palette. Now, let's check its type properties. The section view type properties are very similar to grid and level. Now here, the callout tag, that's for a different view, so let's skip this one. Next is here, the section tag. This is what we need. So we're going to click here. These two options right here, this just allows us to customize or set a family for the section head and tail like so. Give me a second. Here's the head. The tail is somewhere here behind this toolbar. Let's change this to open. And let's change the tail into field horizontal and we click apply. There, see that? This became transparent with just lines and this became a horizontal tail instead. Now, if you click this, there will be a button here in the middle. This is the gaps. If you click it, you can control line. This is to avoid any clash with other annotation. Also, you can change this one. If you go back to type properties here and this, instead of gap, we can make it continuous. And I'm afraid there's only two options. There. You see the difference? So this is a personal preference of what you want to use. Okay, so let's undo everything. Next, if you right-click your section view, there are there's some options here, such as flip section. It will make 180 degree, or you can use the rotate hotkey, like so. All right, and next is actually using the section view. Right-click, go to view. There we go. Now, let's do a window tile. Let's change this to fine and realistic there. So if I click this, do you see that? It highlights what's actually seeing the ground floor. Now if I delete this, it's also deleted here. So undo. Now let's play around with the offset or the view range. From the section window here, if we change this to let's say 5,000, there it's gone. Why? If you go here, Look at this broken line. It's gone, right? So as you see, the crop, the crop region is being distorted or rather it's moving as well. So if I move this forward, I'm going to see the wall again. There, see that? Okay, so that's it for the section view. Oh, I almost forgot. You can do annotation here such as, I mean, you can do everything you want here. It's just a section view. So you can do some annotation. Like so. You can delete. You can even move. Look at this wall here. If I move this to the right, there. You can alter it. Oh, you can see it, of course, because it's a plan view. But if we were to go to 3D, there. If I make this smaller, you can see it real time in 3D. So that's what the power of section does. So let's go ahead and undo everything. So next, 
let's try to make our house smaller before we end this video because we still have some time okay so now let's first delete everything oops uh, unpin all of it now let's hide the grid for now so we don't delete by mistake select all and delete okay now let's show the grid let's change this to 7000 mm, 4000 let's do another grid Oh, actually, if you click the grid, there should be a dimension line here. Let's make this 3,000. Okay, let's change this to 4. We don't need this, I think. That's too much. Since it's 7,000, let's make this 6,000. We only need a very small house. Oh, we're losing, we're missing our grid. C one two three four A B C. Let's make this. Hmm. All right, four thousand. So extend. This is too far. Now, since our grid became smaller, and something is hidden here. Anyway, okay. Like this word, something is here. Oh, the CAD. Don't worry about it, okay? Now, um, where were we? Okay, so now since our grid became smaller, we don't need this bubble head on the right side. I mean, you can keep it if you want to. Now, let's make another column, a new one, structure, column, let's place this here, we only need 300 by 300 square. Um, home underscore. Copy all this to the middle of the grid. Alright, deleting this one. Next is an architecture wall. Since this is 300. Alright, let's make a 300 thick wall. Material will still be brick. Let's leave it as is. We only need to change the thickness. Get rid similar. All right, there we go. So now let's make a wall on each end. Or rather, let's complete our exterior wall. Now this is what it should look like once it's finished. We left this empty because this will be like our garage area for the car. Now, let's make our interior wall, duplicate, let's make it 100mm, since it's, since it's an interior one. Let's look for gypsum, I believe there's a generic gypsum here, great, here we go, okay. Now, this is our entryway. Hmm. Okay, let's do it like this. We will make this our bathroom area. Ok, 
okay so this area here let's say we'll do a minimalist kitchen combination of the dining table here will be the living room but here we need a support so let's make a brick wall here let's use the same as our exterior one let's make a definite dimension for it oops wrong So a common entrance way would be 1,000, but let's make it 1,200. Oops. There we go. Now let's leave this dimension here. This will be the kitchen area, living room, entryway, bathroom. Let's make the storeroom, and we're going to put a door here to see the car. Okay, I think this is good enough. Let's see what it looks like in 3D. Nice. Ah, we forgot the floor. Let's make one. We don't need this. Let's use this generic. No, we're going to use slab. Let's use this one, but 500 mm is too much. Let's make it 300. No, let's just rename it since we're not going to be using this one. 300 edit 300 okay apply and okay so from here we'll make it here then we're gonna sketch this part we're gonna make a ramp here soon now we're just trimming okay oops we forgot to trim this part cool there we go, oops. Now, you see, we're using the wrong hatch here. We will fix that in, in the next video or in some soon, in some future videos. Here, let's add a stepway. Let's double click this one. Mm, what's the distance between this? 4,000. Okay, let's make a circle in the middle here. Click this start end radius arc. You can actually play around this and it will look like something here. Now, this should be a good way for us to continue our entryway. This part. Oops, what's the command key for split? When you use command keys too much, you forgot what they look like in the icon. Oh man, we're stream. Sorry, split, we're split. I forgot the key. Oh, here we go. Trim and trim. Okay. Now let's press OK on this one. There we go. Now we're off to a good start. What else? This is the entryway. Let's make an, a back door exit. Hmm. Let's make it here in our storage area. Let's do something similar but a bit smaller. Let's make a square one instead. This should be 4K. So, usually when I was starting in Revit, I used to do this kind of practice to get the midline. But now, well, you'll get used to it soon enough. Oops. Trim, trim. All right. So I think we're done for now. We haven't done our finished flooring yet. We need to put carpet in the living room, some tiling in the bathroom and here. And I think this kind of flooring for the garage is okay. We will add some ramp here in the future. And I think we need some stairs going to the second floor. This area right here should be a good stair area or we'll make a stairs outside. Let's think about it in the future. For now, we're done here. It's good. It's looking nice. So I guess 
I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It will help me a lot. Thank you again, guys. See you.